So, making this video because just bought a new trailblazer and before I went out and bought one, I tried to watch every video I could about these things and didn't find the information that I was looking for. Um, either they were, you know, corporate Miller videos or shield videos or they just didn't talk about the things that I was curious about. Um, so here's my machine um, at the moment it's only got 28 hours I believe on it 28 hours on it um, of course I'll post more as I use it more <clears throat> but um, so obviously this is the one with the battery charge option this is actually the first one I've ever seen personally that has that option I've only used it on 12 volt uh, batteries so far but it is freaking awesome um, it charges the battery at idle which is really cool and uh, I talked to a welder repair guy um, and he was saying that the way that that works is it actually robs power from the weld output board and just essentially voltage controls the weld output um, so you can charge batteries and pull AC power at the same time or weld and pull AC power at the same time but you cannot charge batteries and weld at the same time because it steals power from the weld board um, but it does work really really cool it charges at idle and revs up um, as it needs to when you're cranking on the engine um, this one has the XL power uh, you can get power at idle, um, but it is only, I believe, 2,400 watts, and uh, I was hoping that I could run a little 110-volt uh, air compressor off of it, um, but it does not have any surge watts at all. Like, 2,400 is all it's got, that's it, that's all. It does not have any extra for inrush current of a electric motor. Um, the normal 110-volt outlet runs to full RPM as soon as you put a load on it and that will start a little air compressor just fine. Um, I was around the older style of these in the past and they had a little um, fuel pump up on top of the valve cover um, that ran off an impulse line and uh, just wasn't particularly a fan of that I um, some of the Bobcats and whatnot I knew you could get a electric fuel pump but I was really happy when I got mine here to see how simple this fuel system is so we have a draw straw from the tank right here comes up in a little filter goes into a little pulser electric pump out of that into the injection pump if you will and feeds the EFI system. And what's really interesting I find is that this pulser pump runs on demand whenever the injection pump needs it. Um, so when you turn the ignition on here, the pulser pump does not automatically run. It only runs when the injection pump wants it, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Let's see if I can get back in here. They ship with really a bullshit um, U-bolt clamp for the exhaust. I put a little constant torque clamp on there because I think they're better. Those U-bolt clamps just kind of crush the pipe and then it's ever, you know, pain in the ass if you ever got to take it off again. Um, so was one thing that I was curious about too when I was looking into these things is the air filter setup. It's just a little round air filter. It's got a little piece of foam on the outside of it. It comes pre-oiled a little bit, but I did actually put uh, some proper air filter oil on it because I do sometimes run in horrendously dusty conditions. On the inside here, it does have a little um, rubber condom on the stud that seals against the bottom side of the air filter here seems to be working pretty good so far but haven't uh, 
haven't run in really nasty conditions just yet. As you can see, everything is still pretty clean under here. But uh, yeah, so far, absolutely love this thing. It's awesome. Uh, doesn't burn too much fuel. Welds idle, makes auxiliary power at idle. Um, pretty much just a badass unit. Um, start up here. I have not done any wire welding off it yet. Um, I did just fart around with it and play with the uh, with the TIG welding on it. It uh, it does lift arc TIG, which is really, really cool. Um, and uh, has a feature called Auto Crater, which if you have it set for that, um, and you extend the arc length, it will automatically uh, taper off the arc. I suppose I gotta get in TIG mode here. The the uh, the older ones had different settings, like for um, for standard take. Actually, there's a little lift pump going there. The other one had settings on this switch here for lift arc and whatnot. On the newer one, you go over to the TIG setting here, press and hold on this one here for five seconds, and you see right there it pops up auto crater, and you can turn that on or off um, and then it has all sorts of other different deals in here Th this VRD this is a voltage reduction it reduces the open circuit voltage um, you reset your oil through this guy here on the older machines you would just click this back and forth a couple times um, oops got to get back into it here Um, so you can access hour meter with the machine running. You can do all this with the machine running. Um, oil hours. I did change the oil recently. Um, and this is kind of interesting. You can set your oil change interval. Why the hell it goes up to a thousand? I'm not sure. But you can set your oil change interval down to 50. And I believe in, yeah, 50 hour increments. Um, I've just got mine set to 100. Um, but yeah, so Auto Crater is now accessed through that. And if we go, we'll just let it time out to our main menu. When we're on the TIG function, if we just click it one time real quick. Oh, maybe it has to be running. Anyways, if you just click it real quick, then you can set the auto stop um, sensitivity. Um, which I haven't farted around with that just yet, but uh, still a pretty new machine to me. Still got to mess around with it and see um, how everything works and whatnot, but uh, really excited to have it and I'll be posting more videos um, about this thing. Bye.